A topology is a layout of a computer network. There are two types of topology, physical and logical. A physical topology defines how devices on the network are connected. A logical topology describes how data flows over the physical topology. Based on its layout, we can further classify a topology into bus, star, ring, mesh, and point-to-point. -point. Each subtype arranges devices or moves data differently from others. In this video, we will explore each subtype and learn how it works with its advantages and disadvantages. Let us start with the bus topology. A bus topology is the earliest implementation of computer networks. By far, it is the most simple and oldest topology. It arranges all nodes in a line. A node is a network device. Computers, printers, and servers are examples of nodes. It uses two types of coaxial cables to connect nodes. It uses a thick coaxial cable as the primary cable and thin coaxial cables to give connections from the primary cable. It uses BNC connectors to join thin coaxial cables to the primary cable. Because of its shape, a BNC connector is also called a T connector. It uses terminators to close both ends. Now, let us see how signals travel on this topology. When a device sends signals, signals reach all devices. Each device checks the received signals. If incoming signals are for it, it processes them. If not, it discards them. This flow of signals creates a bus layout. In other words, it uses a bus for physical and logical layouts. This topology works only when one device sends data at a time. If two devices send data simultaneously, signals collide in the cable and create a collision. When a collision occurs, all devices wait until it removes and sends data again. This mechanism is called CSMA slash CD. You can view the previous video of the series to learn more about it. There is one more thing we need to understand about it. A break in cable brings the entire network down. For example, in this network, PC1 and PC2 are on the other side of the break. It looks like they can communicate. But it's not true. They cannot talk. When any of these send signals to another, signals reach the break and bounce back, creating a collision in the cable. A collision in the cable stops all devices from sending signals. This way, a cable break or loose terminator can bring the entire network down. This topology has the following advantages. It uses the most straightforward layout. It requires minimal components to set up. It is easy to implement and maintain. It has the following disadvantages. It is outdated and no longer used in modern networks. It provides the slowest speed among all other topologies. A break-in cable or an open connection can bring the entire network down. It does not have an inbuilt mechanism to reduce or remove collision. Devices in this topology use their own CSMA slash CD mechanism to remove the collision. Since the bus topology does not have an inbuilt mechanism for collision, IBM developed its in-house topology to address this issue. This topology is called the ring topology. A ring topology uses a multi-access unit at the center of the network. All nodes connect to it, forming a star-like layout. A star-like layout is called a star topology. Although it uses a star topology for physical layout or cabling, it does not use the same design for data transportation. Electrically, this network behaves like a ring, where the network signals travel around the ring to each node in turn. It uses a token passing method to eliminate all possibilities of collision in the network. In this method, a token logically circulates in the network ring. It has two states, free and busy. If a node wants to send some data, it must wait till it receives the token in a free state. When it gets the token with the free state, it attaches data to it and changes its state to busy. The updated token with the data packet reaches the next node in the ring. The next node checks the token state. A busy state represents it contains the data packet. The node matches the destination address of the data packet with its address. If it does not match, it transmits the token and data packet to the following node. The following node does the same thing. This process continues until the destination node receives the data packet. The destination device picks the data packet, changes the state to free in the token, and passes it to the next device. Since data moves in a ring, it is called the ring topology. The main advantage of this topology is that it is free from collision. Since only one device can send data at a time, it never creates a collision. A simple layout and fewer hardware requirements are other remarkable advantages of this topology. On the negative side, it does not allow devices to communicate directly. All communication goes through all devices in a ring, causing a slow data transfer speed and security threat. Like a bus topology, this topology is also outdated and no longer used in modern networks. Modern networks use the star topology. A star topology uses a physical layout similar to the ring topology. 
However, there is a difference. It uses a hub or Ethernet switch to connect nodes. The data flow on this topology depends on what it uses to connect nodes. If it uses a hub, the data flows in a bus layout. If it uses an Ethernet switch, data flows in a bus or point-to-point -point layout. Let us first start with a hub. A hub is a multiport repeater. It amplifies incoming signals and forwards them from all other ports. Signals reach all devices. The destination device picks the signals. All other devices discard the signals. If the destination device replies, the same process happens again. Since signals sent by one device reach all devices, it creates a logical bus topology. Updating a coaxial bus topology with a hub-based star topology provides no logical benefits. Both topologies face the same collision issue and provide identical data transfer speeds. A hub-based star topology's only benefit over a coaxial bus topology is that a cable break affects only a single node. Like bus topology, it does not bring the entire network down. Apart from the affected node, the remaining nodes can communicate usually. The only thing that can bring the entire network down is the failure of the hub. If it fails, no one can communicate with others. Now, let us see how it works with an Ethernet switch. When a switch receives incoming signals, it converts them into data frames like nodes do and reads their source and destination addresses. It uses source addresses to learn about the connected devices. It uses the destination addresses to make the forwarding decision. After taking a forwarding decision, it converts data frames again into signals and forwards them only from the selected ports. If it forwards them from all ports besides the incoming port, it creates a logical bus topology. If it forwards them only from the port connected to the destination device, it makes a logical point-to-point -point topology. An Ethernet switch uses a logical bus topology to forward an incoming data frame only when it does not know the frame's destination address or the frame has a destination address belonging to multiple or all network nodes. If it knows the frame's destination address, it forwards the frame only from the port connected to the destination device using a logical point-to-point -to -point topology. To learn more about this process, you can check this video. It explains how an Ethernet switch processes frames. For this video, remember only one thing. An Ethernet switch uses the point-to-point -to -point topology to forward incoming signals only from the port connected to the destination device. It uses the bus topology to forward incoming signals from all remaining ports. The main advantage of a switch-based star topology over a hub-based star topology or a coaxial bus topology is that it is a collision-free topology. A collision occurs only in a bus topology where all devices share the same media and signals sent by one device reach all other devices. It does not appear in a point-to-point -to -point topology where the source and destination devices use a dedicated path to communicate. If we categorize the total traffic forwarded by a switch on a standard network, above 90% of traffic falls under the point-to-point -point topology. Only a small portion of traffic requires a bus topology. A switch has many inbuilt mechanisms to keep this traffic collision-free. No matter which topology a switch uses to forward the incoming traffic, it keeps the network collision-free. This feature makes it the most preferred choice for modern LAN networks. Administrators choose it in the first place while implementing a LAN network. A collision-free environment allows nodes to utilize all available network bandwidth. On the negative side, it is hard to implement and debug. It uses twisted pair cables. A twisted pair cable uses eight color-coded copper wires. Two wires create a channel for transmission. Another two wires make a channel for receiving data. The remaining four wires reduce crosstalk and noise in the wire. You must understand which wire provides what functionality to implement it. You also need many tools, such as a wire crimper and tester. All these things make this topology expensive and complex. However, it does not stop administrators from choosing this topology for LAN networks in the first place, as it provides significant benefits at the cost of a few negligible disadvantages. Almost all modern LAN networks are built upon it. There are a few more topologies you need to understand for CCNA and other networking certification programs. Let us discuss them. A point-to-point -point topology connects only two devices. It does not require any intermediate device. Devices can use any supported cable type for the connection. For example, they can use a crossover Ethernet cable or wireless signals. Since there are no third devices, they do not face any collision. If we talk about the logical implementation, it is a bus topology. The definition of a bus topology states that the data sent by one device must be received by all remaining devices in the network. Since this topology fulfills this requirement, it is a logical bus topology. This topology is used on both LAN and WAN networks. A point-to-multipoint topology connects a single device to many devices. It is mainly used in WAN networks. It connects one central or main branch with sub-branches. Physically, 
it is a point-to-multipoint layout. Logically, it is a point-to-point topology. It does not fulfill the requirement of a logical bus topology. Data sent by one device does not reach all remaining devices. Devices also do not share the same collision. It is similar to a switch-based star topology where if the switch knows the destination address, the source and destination nodes use a logically point-to-point connection to exchange data. FDDI ring connects all devices in a ring. It uses optical fiber cables to connect devices. It connects the first device to the second, the second to the third, and so on. It connects the last device back to the first device, making a physical ring layout. There are two variations of it, single ring and dual ring. A single ring uses only one connection between two subsequent devices. Since there is only one connection between devices, a link failure brings the entire network down. A dual ring uses two connections. It uses the second ring for backup. It does not use the backup ring for data transmission until the primary ring is functional. If the primary ring fails, it uses the backup ring for data transmission. Nodes do not face any downtime. If the primary link comes online again, it switches data transmission to it. Logically, it uses the same method to move data as the IBM ring topology. It creates a token and allows only the device with the token to send the data. The main difference between the FDDI ring and the IBM ring is that the FDDI ring uses the ring topology for both the physical layout and logical data transportation, while the IBM ring uses the star topology for the physical layout and ring topology for the logical data transportation. A mesh topology creates multiple connections between devices. There are two types of mesh, full and partial. A full mesh connects every device with all other devices in the network. A partial mesh connects a device only with the necessary devices. Both use point-to-point topology for data transportation. This topology is mainly used in WAN. It connects routers at different locations. A direct connection between two routers speed up the data transmission. However, it also increases the network cost. Based on requirements and budget, an administrator can choose between a full or partial mesh. The formula to determine the required number of connections to a full mesh is n multiplied by n minus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of routers. For example, if a network has 4 routers, it needs 6 connections to form a full mesh topology. A hybrid topology connects two different topologies. It was mainly used during the transition period when networks were migrating from the coaxial cable-based bus topology to the hub-based star topology. It uses a bus topology for data transportation. It allowed administrators to use the hub-based star topology to build new networks while maintaining connectivity with existing coaxial cable-based networks. This topology is no longer used in modern networks. Finally, I have summarized the main points of all topologies in this table. You can use it for your reference. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.